Um, this film has a unique tone, I think, uh, and constantly it keeps you on your toes because there's a there's a strong comedy element, but it's it's just made in a way that it's it's very it's unsettling constantly, and it deals with elements of like masculinity and, and violence and the instincts and the condition of that. Um, so just give me a sense because I know that also it has uh, an element of personal interest for you as a setting uh, dealing with martial arts, but in terms of like tackling those topics, mm -hmm. was that the aim of like tackling those topics and this is the tone that resulted or that's the tone that you were going for purposefully? Yeah, I feel like the tone that I kind of live in, the worlds that I like to live in, are this sort of tone. Okay. So it's not that I tried to fit the tone to the movie. The movie just fits in because, to that tone because it's what comes natural to mm -hmm. me. Um, I really wanted to, like you said, it, it makes, I, hopefully it makes people feel a little unease at times. Uh, and not in a negative way, more in a uh, you don't know what's going to happen. And it's not that I'm trying to like pull one over on people. I, I do feel like there are certain elements that certain people may think are supposed to be twists or reveals. And that was never really my interest. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you watch movies, there are elements of this movie that you're going to see coming. But I don't care. I'd rather it feel... It's it's for me. It's more about how does it feel when it comes. How does how does that reveal make you um, think about uh, the plot differently than you would have? Or um, yeah, just trying to subvert expectations in a way that's interesting to me, um, and playing with that unease and that uh, that comedy and blending the two together. Mm -hmm. And um, an interesting thing is that. As you said, there is like the moment you dropped into this um, world in which this man, um, after a traumatic, violent assault, sort of wants to find a way of feeling secure in himself and protected. So he goes through the idea of buying the gun. Then he finds karate. Um, so you and again, you see how that develops, and you, you could even see the dramatic version of this, like this straight up. Very much, yeah. Uh, but then, like for example, the fact that it's martial arts, that the frame of that is through martial art, um, I find it interesting that that is you and this this sort of this this teacher and this this um, emphasis on the violence and the cult of violence too. Um, that's something that is not normally associated with martial arts, but rather with other disciplines. And especially with karate, like karate is, is usually has this idea of, of a very, um, in a way, peaceful and mindful discipline that sure. you would think would keep that at bay and not foster that that kind of atmosphere between people. Now, is that just a, a perception, or being in from the inside of that, uh, you've seen that come true even in stuff like karate? And uh, honestly, I feel like. Karate has an element of cheesiness, and martial arts in general uh -huh. can be a little silly and take themselves too seriously. Uh -huh. uh, whether it's jujitsu, which I do and I love, but I also see the silly side of it as well. A grown men wearing geese and belts and bowing and take like, I don't know, the, the rules that are in place, uh, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's karate, taekwondo, all of those things, obviously they ha I res have respect for it. But I also feel like it, it set up kind of like what I was saying, wanting to make a movie that felt like it was going to feel lighter and maybe go down one path. And then when the turn happens and it gets quite a bit darker, that expectation uh, that you had before for where this movie was going to go goes through out the window. Like mm -hmm. I, I wanted it to be surprising. Um, and I think because we are used to seeing karate used in more of a like you said, peaceful. It's, it's not about attacking somebody, it's about defending yourself, and, and it's not about hurting somebody, it's about defending yourself. When the movie takes its turn into a more darker, cult-like uh, uh, side of things, I wanted that to feel surprising. Okay. Um, and, and I think that it, 
does feel that way. Because yeah, if you've seen a Karate Kid or, or um, I guess like any movie along those lines, like a sports movie in general, there's a build where somebody gets broken down in the beginning, yeah. they find this thing that means something to them, and then they build themselves back up. And then if, even if they win or lose at the end, uh, it doesn't matter because they, they bettered themselves. And I wanted to have that structure feel like it was happening and then, again, just pull the rug out from under the audience mm -hmm. and go, I don't know where it's gonna go anymore. That's interesting. So it doesn't come from uh, uh, you witnessing that sort of similar culture even infecting this room. Yeah, that. I mean, relative, relatively speaking, I don't train with people that are like this okay. <laughs> guy in the movie, uh, but I've seen it peripherally, okay. uh, and I've, I've had certain people uh, either contact me or DM me on, on Instagram who are uh, high-level jiu-jitsu practitioners being like, Oh, this gym feels a lot like oh, wow. our experiences I've had, I've gone through, and uh, a couple of female jujitsu practitioners in particular have have reached out and just said, "I watched your movie, and it made me feel very uncomfortable because it's it's very similar. Obviously, it's a stylized movie, but it's very similar to experiences that I've dealt with with men, uh, and that's sad. But I also feel like." shining a light on it, even if it's in a more stylized way, is important. Uh, and the fact that they're getting something out of this as well, and mm -hmm. watching it and seeing a little bit of themselves in, on screen is, is important to me. And how did you get to choosing karate itself, rather than, for example, jujitsu that you do? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, if I could make a, a movie, this movie about jujitsu and have people know what jujitsu was, I think start. it's because of a like kind of a general perception. It's a general perception thing. Okay. I think that when I first came up with the idea, immediately I threw out jujitsu uh, because even I can go to any city in the world and you say karate, and people know what it is. When you say Brazilian jujitsu, I think most people just assume that it's some sort of karate. They, mm -hmm. I think jujitsu, especially traditional Japanese jujitsu, is, is looked at as as more of like striking, kind of like Taekwondo or karate, with a little bit of grappling. And I just didn't want to have people be like, what's jujitsu? Like, <laughs> and, and then also, I think because when we see movies that have karate in them, we know what it is that, again, it sets up an expectation of what that movie's gonna be. Whereas if you made a jujitsu movie, people who don't know what jujitsu is are like, I guess this happens in jujitsu all the time. This must just be a jujitsu thing. Whereas if you do it in the context of a karate film, people are like, this doesn't feel like a karate film that I've seen before. Okay. So it was a perception thing. I see how that goes back to an archetype, basically. So yeah. it gives you, because the film has in general this kind of stripped down feel to it in which you remove everything and it's very essential. Mm -hmm. um, and it has no no connotations, no geographical connotations, no um, chronological connotations. Mm -hmm. So I guess in a way that really puts the focus on an idea of the martial art and our perception of what and, that would be. Okay. And then also, I, I really want to just embrace stereotypes with the film. Mm -hmm. So it's very on the nose. It's very heavy-handed, but it's on purpose. It's the style of the film. Um, <clears throat> my first film I feel like is much more subtle uh, and this one I wanted to just have fun and be like metal is for men and French speaking is not for men and dachshunds are definitely not for men. <laughs> like I just wanted to be sillier and embrace that stereotype and karate has this stereotype of, of like you said, it's, it's for people who want to be spiritually sound and, and protect themselves and instead people are bashing each other's faces in uh, <laughs> until they go unconscious. Like, that's that's not karate, but that's why I wanted to use it. But I like that um, even in this context, there's still, like, beneath all of the comedy and the, this more uh, surreal elements, there is still a, a heartfelt um, consideration and respect for the legal elements of of practicing this, sure. which again sometimes they're they're framed through the eye of this very particular instructor, um, but uh, it feels like a genuine respect, which I imagine comes from you and from your personal interest. But that it's it's interesting that that can still manage to find its space in a film that then it's doing all these other things with that. I appreciate you saying that because I, I feel like. 
at the end of the day, even though the film is of a different world, it's ever so slightly heightened, uh, I did feel like the characters in it were sincere in their love for what they do and uh, their respect for other people, if sensei aside. Um, but Jesse's character, Casey, I do believe that he really did find something that he loves, but he's just happened to fall into this bastardized version of what he should have found. Um, and despite all the signs around him that he shouldn't stay and that he should get out of there, there's that cult-like mentality of this is something that I, belong, I want to belong to and I'm just gonna look the other way and maybe it's not as bad as I think it is and, and just kind of try and convince yourself uh, mm -hmm. that, that everything's okay despite the warning signs that are all around you. And it's because he, he just he does want, he does have respect for it. And, and I do think, I think Sensei has a respect for karate as well. He's just uh, kind of got a warped sense of what it is um, and especially what masculinity is. And for him, masculinity is above all the most important thing, and then karate is probably second, even though he wouldn't admit to it. That's mm -hmm. probably just how he was raised and how he was taught. Um, so there's this cycle that he's probably been perpetuating and has been perpetuated around him. And uh, I, I think that at the end of the day, Casey's trying to grapple with how do I belong here, even if it's horrible at the same time. I really like how later on in the story when everything has gone completely off the rails already, there's a very grounded scene in which we see Sensei, this instructor, who's responsible for pretty much everything that happens in the film, um, just caught in his daily routine of taking care of his gym and uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, vacuuming That's the mats and then uh, cleaning the toilet. Mm -hmm. And again, not only it makes sense practically because at the end like he's, he's the only guy there yeah. <laughs> but it really instantly uh, pulls he's, you back from this this kind of absurd he's, he's still a person at the end of the day he's still uh i, I david zellner who's a fantastic director he and his brothers uh, he and his brother zellner brothers uh are, are friends of mine but david zellner is in the film as, as henry and the first time he read the script he called me and and we were talking about it and he he just was like i think my favorite part is that at the end of the day, Sensei's still a small business owner and he still has to do the chores. <laughs> like like you said, he's the only real employee of the he business. Does, he, yeah. He's still got to do it. And one of those chores just happens to, I'm not going to spoil it, but one of those chores happens to be something pretty gruesome. Uh, but then it's interspersed with all of these things, like you said, cleaning the toilet, vacuuming the mats. Uh, it's just, that that was one of those things where, yeah, you, you built this to this point and at this crescendo and you've shown this darkness but then you kind of bring it back and you say yeah he still has to clean the mats yeah yeah that's, that's, that's i appreciate that yeah i love that scene it's and I, I also wanted to ask about david zellner because um i know that he was also in the first film yeah so presumably there's a relationship there but also like the films that he makes with his brother like i was thinking of damsel and the kind of the way that you can deconstruct the humor in that it felt that pretty similar. Yeah, like we're we're something. doing different things, but they're spiritually similar. I feel like they come from a similar space of not wanting to take the road uh, that everyone takes. So they're they're trying to go the road less traveled, and it's not to do it on purpose. It's just that that's their aesthetic and that's their their voice. Uh, and I found their shorts uh, years and years ago, and Kat Candler and James Ponsolt, both kind of filmmakers that I respect immensely, had introduced me to them, saying, you're both from Austin, like, you guys should hang out. And I hit it off with the, the boys, and, and they, I've just been such a fan of their movies ever since, and uh, Kumiko, Treasure Hunter, mm -hmm. that the decade of film, I, I guess it's still this decade, I would put Kumiko in the top 10, uh, films of the decade for me. I oh, think that okay. Kamiko is one of the most stunning films uh, that I've seen in in the past ten years, and I just I'm such a big fan or a such a big fan of theirs. Uh, Damsel is incredible too, but Kamiko just blew me away. And, and what's weird too is I've only seen it once. I watched it once, and I was like, oh my god, that was perfect. And I haven't watched <laughs> it yet again, and I'm just realizing that I need to go back and watch it again and see how I feel again. But yeah, that one blew me away. Um, let's talk for a second about Jesse Eisenberg because um, 
is, of course, is the protagonist here. He, he audience is almost exclusively with him. Um, and he, he brings to this um, much of his persona, of course, which is so um, distinctive. Um, how would you work with that, with the, the by now, um, uh, very um, common perception of what he does as an actor? And sort of slightly tweak it here, because I feel that um, while this very much um, is a, a, a Jesse Eisenberg performance and what you see in the, the, the traits of the character, there's also a different edge to him. Yeah. Um, how were you mindful of that and how did you operate to tweak that? He, Jesse is an incredible person, he's an incredible actor. Um, I was very intimidated at the first, like to go and meet with him the very first time. And within five minutes, I was completely at ease. He's such a genuine person. He loved the script, uh, and it made it very easy to work with him because he just had a respect for the material. And it was, I, w I really did come into it thinking he's gonna need changes or whatever it is, or he's gonna uh, not think that certain things work, and he's gonna wanna fix those. And, and he just wanted to make the movie that I had written. And so it was a lot of, uh, we had a couple of meetings uh, at his place where we went through line by line, scene by scene, and kind of talked about everything, and he just wanted to kind of get a sense of where I was coming from. And then on set, he, he just had this immense trust where he would often do something, kind of like you're saying, he would, uh, not necessarily doing a Jesse Eisenberg thing, because I think that he's actually incredibly diverse, and a lot of people don't get him credit for that. They're not seeing the subtleties of what he's doing. But there were times where he would do what was comfortable for him, mm -hmm. and I would be like, I need less, like, which is so hard to do sometimes, especially for an actor who does, I think, go very naturalistic, especially if you know Jesse, he's acting like he is a lot of the yeah. time. He's not fake. That's why it's a persona, because I think people, the they reason know. why they don't see the subtleties is that they easily associate it to I think that's the yeah. thing. And so, uh, and a, a couple of his biggest roles have been basically him being a version of himself. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this one, we really wanted, he just was like, oh, I think it was one day he said, I just realized Casey's an infant. He's like a baby. And the world around him is bright and new and scary. And he has such faith that every single person around him has, uh, has only his best interest at heart. And he doesn't want to believe that anyone is trying to do anything other than like what's right for him. And so he has this trust uh, there, and, and so we just kind of treated it like he was an infant. And uh, it was really fun sometimes where he would be like, how would you do this? And I would be like, oh, I'm not an actor, I don't wanna give you a line reading. He's like, no, no, just like try it. Like, just, you never know. And he would, I would say something, he'd go, oh, okay, I know what you mean now. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> and then he would put his spin on my horrible acting, and then it would be great, and it would be perfect. And uh, there were so many times where we would do one take, and I would be like, Jesse, that was perfect. I, I'm happy to move on. And he's so just wanting to make sure that we made the movie that I wanted to make, where he would be, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, man, it's fine. And it would be like five minutes of convincing him. I promise, I'm happy, oh, wow. I'm not moving on just to move on. Uh, he just, he's, he's the best. Uh, he's gonna cameo probably in my next thing. Um, I don't care if people know. It's not like a big thing. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just the fact that he wants to be in the next thing uh, is really cool and there's this fun little part. So uh, fingers crossed it all works out. If it doesn't work out, then everyone knows that he did want to. <laughs> I can brag about that. For yeah. some reason, it couldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but he was he was attached to this, I imagine, at an earlier stage than, for example, Alexander Nivola. We needed the lead first, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, Je Je I wrote this in 2015, at the tail end of 2015. 2016, I found my producer, and then 2017, in like July, Jesse read it uh, over a weekend, emailed me, that next day, working day, and uh, asked if he could be in the movie. And I was just like, yes. And uh, from when, because he had such a finite schedule, he had like this one little opening. So from when I found out that he wanted to be in the movie to when we started shooting was three months later, a little bit less actually. Uh, so it's not that he was attached for a long time, mm -hmm. but he was the first person that we found. And then Imogen came shortly thereafter. I had a Skype with her and I'd just been a huge fan of hers, especially in Green Room and she was a no-brainer for me. And then Alessandro, was Sensei was a trickier role. We were trying to find a very specific type of person, an actor, and somebody who maybe 
didn't really have this preconceived notion of what style that they do. Like, I, I think that people are familiar with Alessandro, but they don't know it sometimes. They're, he's always just this really great character actor and, and kind of peripheral character, so, yeah. So you mean you were looking for someone who's not, um, who's not a type recognizable? Yeah, like, I wouldn't, not that I was gonna get a Tom Cruise, but I wouldn't want a Tom Cruise to be sensei because people sure. would see Tom Cruise. And we already had Jesse, uh, who's so recognizable. Yeah. And I felt like with Sensei, I wanted somebody who's been such a solid working actor for all these years and does these crazy cool uh, performances, but more as a supporting character. And then just say, go for it. Let's like really go for it. So uh, I think Alessandra came on like a week before we started shooting. That's funny considering that it still has to be like this commanding performance and, and that's what he does i don't know if he has any background in, in like martial arts or like nothing he's very physical he he's keeps in shape uh he had just come off a movie that shot in south africa that was uh an action film or had a lot of action in it so he came ready to to do the stunts uh and he was super excited to do them but uh yeah he did, i don't think he had any martial arts experience at all so just there was that trust there but mainly Above all, we can always fake a martial arts move if we had sure. to, but you can't fake the performance, and he is such an incredible actor, and I think the performance speaks for itself. People people are blown away by him. I mean, the movie, people tend to like the movie and, and, and think of all the parts kind of work in, in their own way, but more often than not, Alessandro is the one thing that people call out as being their favorite, yeah. so yeah. that's that's huge. I mean, he's been a favorite of mine since Face Off. Everyone, so, yeah. Yes. That's the thing, and that's the probably the thing he's most well known for. Anytime I talk to somebody, still the thing because I think that it's down to my love for Face Up, but I feel that now people know him through his supporting uh, roles. In recent that's fair, years. and he's been in a lot of things that uh, he's, he's been so great in. But I think that role was such a like breakout for him yeah. that uh, especially people who are over twenty five, yeah. <laughs> they they tend to know it the yeah. most. And so I, I'm sure I, out of every character, he gets recognized for that the most. Maybe that'll change with Sensei now, but <laughs> yeah. way more people have seen Face Off. And <laughs> I don't think anyone will ever see, or more people will never see self defense than they've seen, say, Face Off. So I don't know, yeah. that, that, that thing of him like detailing what he's going to do over the weekend. Yeah, <laughs> and the trailer and everything too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, of course, man. That was great. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.